If you're looking to purchase a new computer in 2019, chances are the Microsoft Surface has been in consideration. But there are so many that are so similar. Which one do you choose? I am Brandon with Bad Tech and Gaming, and we will be discussing that question and more. Hang around for the end to see our buying recommendation. In front of us here we have the Surface Pro, which is a 256GB i5 version, and the Surface Go 128GB version. Now in this review we will be also talking about the Surface Pen and Mouse briefly. What are the differences? The Surface Go looks like a tablet that is trying to be a computer at 10 inches, and the Surface Pro looks like a computer that is trying to be a tablet at 12.3 inches. The Go is great to hold in hand and is very light at 1.15 pounds. Because of its small size, the keyboard feels petite, and I have smaller hands, so that's saying a lot. This really makes it hard to get used to. Also, I have found that the gesture navigation works uh, a couple of times better on the Pro than it does on the Go. Not sure why this is, but I did just notice every time I wanted it on the Pro, it worked. And every time I wanted it on the Go, uh, not every single time would it work. Now, these are not quite Apple's gestures, but man, these are some of the best iterations I've ever seen on a Windows machine. The Pro is a little bit heavy with one-handed use, coming in at a whopping 1.7 pounds. However, the keyboard is fantastic in comparison to the Go. They both are very clicky, but the Surface Pro feels much more natural overall due to its bigger size, making it a more PC-like experience. The screen on the Pro is a difference maker. It's a beautiful 273600 by 1824 pixel display versus the Go at 1800 by 1200 display. Also, something to note is if you look closely, the Pro does have a gap for the air vents, just something that may surprise some people if they've never actually looked at the differences before. In my use, I didn't actually use it enough to actually get to hear the fan noise, but I'm pretty sure they were there, it just didn't really make all that much of a sound. Speaking of power, with Intel's 8th gen processor, 8GB of RAM, this machine, the Pro, should be able to handle simple games and low graphics with integrated HD graphics from Intel. I will have to make another blog or video about that if you guys do want to see it, so let me know in the comments below. Now the Go can run games at low as well. Biggest difference is you'll notice frame drops and this won't last forever. Much like the Surface 3, I'm actually typing most of this on, the performance of these devices, these cheaper ones, just go down significantly over time. I've had it about five years now and it is lagging. Gaming is just not what these Atom and Pentium processors are made for. Spec-wise, the Pro dominates the Go, which I suppose makes sense, as it is a Pro product. With the Surface Go, that Intel Pentium Gold processor, 4GB of RAM, 128GB solid-state drive, a 10-inch touchscreen, 5MP front-facing camera with 1080p, 8MP rear-facing camera with 1080p as well, a USB-C port, microSD card reader, headphone jack, and Surface port, compared to the Surface Pro, which has an 8th Gen i5 processor, 8GB of RAM, 256GB solid-state drive, 12.3-inch touchscreen, those integrated graphics I mentioned earlier, the exact same camera setup, a 1.6-watt stereo speaker, one full-size USB, micro SD card headphone jack, and mini display. The Pro is going to have the ports to fit into most situations, whereas the Go really is trying to be a tablet with a few extra ports. Now, what do these things have in common? The hinge, which is superb on either device. You can bend it backwards at whatever angle works best for the task at hand. The ability to go from laptop to a drafting table makes it a experience that is absolutely phenomenal. The Surface Pen does feel the same across both devices. For those who have not used the Surface Pen before, it works very well. You do have to press this one onto the screen a bit harder before it actually does anything, which is a bit different from the last one that I had. You also cannot angle the pen at too deep of an angle, otherwise it will not make contact. Both of which I think are things that have to do with the new tip that is on this one. However, the fact that you can attach it magnetically to the side of your device does come in handy more often than not. Now, for carrying it around school, you may not want to do this, stick it in a pocketbook or a bag. But, when you're just sitting at the table, it's a nice place to store your pen. The Surface Pen is built very well. It also has a button for an eraser and a button near the grip of the pen itself. Now this does work the same across both devices. One thing I find interesting on pretty much any Surface device is when you drag the pen slowly across from corner to corner, it has a bit of a wiggle to it. 
but if you make that same gesture going very fast, it is very smooth. So depending on what your plan is for using the pen, this might make a bit of a difference. Not a lot, but a bit. However, I did find myself being able to predict this and compensate for it. Also, here we have the Surface Mouse, which this has to be one of the coolest mice I've ever used. In the box, it comes in a flat state, meaning it is powered off, only to turn on and be ready to connect when you actually bend it. It snaps in place almost like one of those wristbands. Let me know if you know what the name of those kind of wristbands are in the comments, by the way. I can think of it at the time of writing this review. Overall usage is, well, what you would expect from a mouse. It only does two, two buttons and a finger sliding. Now you can use one or two fingers to scroll, which is pretty nice, but in reality, that's what you do in a normal mouse. And as always, this mouse may not be the best for gamers. Now for the all important price. There are different variants of each device listed, but the only devices that I'm going to list out are the ones that we have. The Pro 6, 256 gigabyte is nearly $1,200. The Go 4 gigabytes of RAM, 128 gigabyte is only $499. So you're paying more than double for the actual device. And these both were on specials. The, the Pro came with the pen and the keyboard, whereas the Go didn't come with either of those. So in that particular bundle, it definitely doubles the price. And in the regular variants, it doesn't quite, but still much more expensive. In conclusion, over my limited time with these devices, they are very similar, but made for two completely different use cases. If you need a mobile screen, or an existing tablet slash iPad user, something to browse the internet with, take notes, maybe do some apps on, this is perfect. And especially for students as well. Quick notes here, fun video there, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, nothing too fancy. However, if you use various programs and use it for work every single day, type a lot, the Pro will be the one for you. Not to mention that bigger screen and more power will make a big difference when you're running multiple applications side by side, even gaming. And I wouldn't recommend either of these devices for gamers as well, they're just not marketed for gamers. This is the student or the businessman. The gamer, you're gonna wanna go up. I mean, they do make surfaces that can handle that, but we'll cover that at a different time. Personally, I would purchase the Pro. My needs are vastly different from most people's. I run a lot of applications, but that is my personal opinion. Thanks for reaching this point in the review. If you guys are new here, subscribe and hit that like button. Also, feel free to check out any of our other review videos. If I miss something in this that you want me to review or touch up on, I will absolutely just let me know in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for being here. Check out our other social media sites in the description below. You guys have a wonderful day. It is time to end.